All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So I've got another interesting piece of bodybuilding history that a lot of you guys may not have heard before. So this story involves what I believe is one of the most iconic photos in bodybuilding, and that is this photo here of Arnold Schwarzenegger posing on a platform in front of a large crowd of people. Now, this was actually not a bodybuilding competition. So this photo was taken in 1976 at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. Now, I'm sure many of you may have actually seen this photo, but many of you may not know the story behind it. So what happened here was this was an exhibition held at this museum, the Whitney Museum in 1976. And this exhibition was called Articulate Muscle, The Body as Art. This was a living exhibition. So what this was, was you had Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Zane, and Ed Corney in 1976 going to this museum. Um, they would be put up on these rotating circular pedestals um, that would spin around and they would hit poses and hold those poses. In a crowd consisting of a panel of prestigious members of the art community and different uh, members of the museum would basically analyze and evaluate these physiques and these poses as being living, breathing artwork. So how did this all come about? So this, this actually happened before Pumping Iron came out, but this was towards the end of Arnold Schwarzenegger's reign as Mr. Olympia. So obviously in 1976, um, that would be the year that Franco Colombo actually won the Mr. Olympia competition. And the following year, in 1977, Frank Zane would win the Mr. Olympia. So despite the fact that Pumping Iron hadn't came out yet and bodybuilding had not yet become mainstream, Arnold Schwarzenegger at this point in time had won six Mr. Olympia competitions, so he was the most well-known bodybuilder on the face of the earth, so a lot of people still knew who he was. So the reason that they did this was George Butler, the producer and director of Pumping Iron. He didn't have enough money to actually finish the production of the movie, so I needed him to do some kind of fundraiser to raise the additional money needed to come out with Pumping Iron. Um, so on February 25th, 1976, at 8 p.m. at the Whitney Museum of American Art, they held this uh, living exhibition of bodybuilding where they presented bodybuilding as art. Um, so initially, George Butler only expected maybe a couple hundred people to show up, maybe 300 at the max is what they were planning for. Well, what they didn't expect was that over 5,000 people showed up to come see this exhibit. And that's why in a lot of the photos and videos from this event, you see people sitting on the floor, you see people standing in the background because there wasn't enough seating for everybody because they did not expect that big of a turnout. Again, this was held in New York City and all these bodybuilders were training out in Venice. Um, and Venice and California were known to be really the mecca of bodybuilding and that's where all the interest was presumed to be in bodybuilding. So all the way on the other side of the country in New York City, they weren't expecting there to be that big of an interest in this, but little did they know, 5,000 people plus would turn up. So they actually raised so much money at this event, it would not fit in the cash registers that they had. So they had to stack it in a pile on the floor. I um, mean, George Butler says there was a six foot high stack of $5 bills um, from all the entry fees of people coming to see this exhibit. So they made way more money than, than they anticipated. And they ended up making enough money to finish a production of Pumping Iron. So this little museum exhibition that a lot of people didn't know about was really the catalyst for pumping iron becoming what it did because this is what told George Butler and told these bodybuilders, okay, the mainstream general public does have interest in this. This is something that they're going to want to see. They're going to want to watch this and this movie might actually be a success. So this is really what pushed pumping iron to the finish line. And obviously, like I said, they had all these art historians and prestigious members of the art community um, speaking and judging on a panel here. And what they were discussing was really like the history of art and how these very early Renaissance era artists like Leonardo da Vinci were, you know, famous for painting and sculpting and doing all these images of a muscular male body and how throughout history, this has been viewed as a piece of artwork. And I think this really speaks to the idea that the golden era of bodybuilding, the physiques that these guys had, were not only very aesthetic and the most aesthetic physiques in the history of bodybuilding, but they were artistic as well. They were so aesthetically pleasing that the mainstream community uh, would come to view these as artwork. So I thought you guys might enjoy hearing this story because it really is the embodiment of what the golden era was all about, having these artistic physiques, these very artistic poses that we don't see anymore. Um, so artistic, in fact, they were able to be viewed in a museum as an exhibition. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this event and what you think about this piece of bodybuilding history. And do you think any of today's bodybuilders could pull off something like this? Now, personally, I could see a bodybuilder like Kai Green being able to pull off something like this because of his posing um, being as artistic and just as artistic as Kai Green is, I could see him doing something like this and being successful at it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.